like to get started by calling Lisa Bianco up to the podium. Good evening and welcome to the Farmingdale School District's 19th Annual Wall of Fame Induction Ceremony. Let's all rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. You may now be seated. Good evening. It's wonderful to see so many people here. Come on in. It's wonderful to see so many people here today as we honor four alumni for their outstanding accomplishments and prove that once a daler, always a daler. In the event of an emergency, please exit through either exit door on the um, either side of the lecture hall. There's also two exits on the side of the stage up here. My name is Mrs. DePiro and I'm the, proud to be one of the assistant principals of this very fine high school, as well as the chairperson for our Wall of Fame Selection Committee. I'd like to start out our program by asking Assemblyman Joseph Saladino to come on up to the podium. Thank you, everyone. It's a tremendous honor for me, for me to be here with so many distinguished people in our community, former mayor and our, our trustee and, and deputy mayor of our village, folks from this wonderful school district, and even the grand marshal of the Little League's opening day yesterday. You know, it, it's really something to see community leaders back here, coming back, to give back, and to be such a tremendous example of the right path. That's very important, especially in this day and age, showing young people the examples to emulate. And we have so many successful young people in this school district for a very obvious reason. Because of the administrators and the teachers of this incredible school district. Farmingdale School District is just filled with leaders and so many alumni who have done so much, including Councilman Joe Muscarella, who was just here with us and who I'm representing, along with <laughs> Supervisor John Venditto, the Oyster Bay Town Board, and from the New York State Senate, my colleagues in Albany, including Senator Kemp Hannon and Senator Michael Venditto, and I hope I didn't forget anybody, otherwise I'll get in trouble. Uh, just a quick word about our honorees. Wonderful, accomplished people that I'm so proud to meet and know in one case. Cap Captain Kenneth Niederberger, 1986 uh, graduate here of Farmingdale. Member of the United States Navy working in special development in the special development group. Former uh, captain of the lacrosse team, president of the Varsity Leaders Club, a, ma a member of the National Honor Society, and that list goes on and on. Lieutenant Colonel Carl Carrera, 1984 graduate, uh, graduate of West Point, uh, member of the United States Army here in Farmingdale, played four sports, and his accolades go on and on. He brings so much pride to his community and to his parents, Ralph and Pat, who are with us today. Tim Cobart, a 2002 graduate, and in a short amount of time has accomplished so much in the field of entertainment, including winning a Grammy. I couldn't even sing the national anthem without being laughed at. You won a Grammy at your young age. God bless you, that's fabulous. He also hosts a, a very successful television program and is a renowned children's musician and his accomplishments are a long, long list. And someone who I'm very glad to call a friend and a friend to all of us in government, and that's George Starkey, but we all lovingly know him as Butch. Uh, he's a former mayor, uh, owner of Starkey Brothers, who asked me to remind you of something very, very important. It's springtime, and that means planting, so head on down to Starkey Brothers. <laughs> Again, I, I'm not going to go on and on. You'll hear so much uh, about 
uh, today's inductees, but I do have New York State citations for each and every one of you. And I want to say that leaders, true leaders, are very tough to come by. So when the community gets a chance to honor you, it's very important, obviously, to you and your family, but it means so much more to a community of outstanding people. Leaders all in the different community groups and young people searching for leaders like you. You've already made a difference here when you were students, in your professional lives, but we thank you in government because you continue to make a tremendous difference. So on behalf of the 19 million people in the state of New York, and we'd like to pack them all in the room, and I'm sure they'd all like to be here to say thank you. And on behalf of my colleagues in government, Councilman Muscarella, the Oyster Bay Town Board, Senator Venditto, Senator Hannon, and my other uh, colleagues in government, I present you with this New York State citation to say thank you, to let you know you are cherished, respected, and honored. God bless each and every one of you. Thank you. of our school. There are 70 plaques, one for each person inducted since 1998. I welcome you to take a closer look at the plaques of our alumni after tonight's ceremony. Just like our students, the Wall of Fame is a very diverse group of young men and women who at first, actually not necessarily all young, <laughs> we just inducted someone last year who was in, their, in his 90s. But um, just like the Wall of, our student body, our Wall of Fame is a very diverse group. Um, who have been first responders, veterans, educators, chefs, doctors, entertainers, artists, uh, business owners, and so much more. But all are excellent role models for our students who show that with hard work and determination, you can turn your passion into a successful career. It is our hope that today's students will be inspired by our wall of fame to, ins to pursue their dreams and strive to one day be honored for their own accomplishments in a future wall of fame ceremony. Today, we honor four Dalers, <laughs> Lieutenant Colonel Carl Currier of, from the class of 1984, Mr. Tim Kubart from the class of 2002, <laughs> Captain uh, Kenneth Niederberger from the class of 1986, and Mr. George Butch Starkey from the class of 1975. Each year, the selection committee meets to review nearly 50 nomination applications to select just a couple of people who are deserving of the honor. I would like to thank our selection committee for their hours on that they've devoted to this project. Many of them are here today. Thank you to our two community members, Lenore Russo and Miss Linda Diorio, our students, Lisa Bianco and Tyler Kozakowski, and our faculty members, Miss Lori Crows and Mr. Francis Mayerhofer. It is because of your dedication and support that our Wall of Fame is something that we can all be so proud of. On behalf of the Wall of Fame selection committee, I'd like to thank our Board of Ed members, our Central Office Administration, our Principal, Mr. Zakian, and my fellow Assistant Principal, Ms. Martinez, for all of their guidance and support. Tonight, we will hear from several of our current students who are journalists for our school newspaper, The Paper Lion. They have had the privilege of interviewing our honorees about their accomplishments. We, also, um, we will also hear from the community members who nominated these four fine alumni and of course, our honorees will be invited to say a few words. I now introduce you to Alicia Sclafani and Brittany Gen Gensman, who interviewed Lieutenant uh, Colonel <coughs> Currier. <coughs>
determined, 25 years of determined selfless involvement in the United States military. Lieutenant Colonel Carl A. Carrera retired. He started his career in the field artillery in Germany, and following that assignment, he took initiative in numerous locations, including Louisiana, Virginia, Korea, Iraq, and Kentucky. In the midst of this traveling and devotion to the United States, he received a Bachelor of Science degree from the U.S. Military Academy, as well as a Master's of Art degree in Telecommunications from Webster's University, and graduated from the Commander General Staff College in Kansas. Along with this, was also he was also involved with the Wounded Warriors Program. Through all his service, he received constant support and love from his family. Mr. Carrera could be described as a selfless, humble man who has devoted 25 years to our country and deserves the recognition for his brave actions. He shows true character, which is reflected in his early years at Farmingdale High School. Thank you so much, ladies. Thank you. Our Daily Press journalist will also be writing an article that will appear in our um, next issue of the Paper Lion. I now introduce you to Mr. Ralph uh, Carrera, uh, the father of um, Colonel Carrera. Thank you for nominating your son, and would you come up and say a few things? My family, my, to my dad, mom, um, and my, my other family who have 
my, my real family who's down uh, actually in uh, Virginia right now. They couldn't make it up. Um, other distinguished guests, students and faculty at Farmingdale High School and any friends that I didn't run into uh, outside. I want to thanks, uh, thank you all for attending the ceremony tonight and I, I truly am humbled by, by this recognition. I think this is a perfect way to end a beautiful spring day. As I sat pondering what to speak about, I struggled with a theme, a message, something to go on. And as I kept pacing and wondering what I was going to talk about, my mom offered about five minutes would do. But I'm bummed. Okay, you didn't get that. So, <laughs> so, before, so before I went into West Point, um, we had to undergo a psychological test. So there was two other, two other um, Long Island candidates uh, that were in the room with me, and the psychiatrist came in and said, I have a very simple question for you. And he looked at the first student and he said, what's five times five? And the student looked at him and said, 191. The psychiatrist was kind of taken back and he kind of looked and he's like, okay. Looked at the second student and said, okay, what's five times five? And the kid looked at him and said, Wednesday. <laughs> now the psychologist was really starting to worry about it. And he knew about my Farmingdale you know, public education system. And he said, well, what's five times five? And I answered 25. And he goes, finally, somebody, somebody gets it. And he goes, well, if you don't mind me asking, how did you get that? And I said, well, that was easy. I just divided 191 by Wednesday. <laughs> so that's, that's my claim to fame at Farmingdale High School. Um, but seriously, um, when I, when I think back and when I thought about really what to write, I think the other three gentlemen that are being honored tonight would agree with me that uh, one, if not the most important leadership trait we all possess, is taking care of people. We are who in leadership positions by default become mothers, fathers, confidants, guidance counselors, life coaches, and a shoulder to those that are sick, hurting, injured, confused, and lonely, just to name a few. And more importantly, it is about passion. I see some members of the baseball team here. Passion about that. They go out every day and they, they're on the field. Sometimes in rain. I remember standing out with Angelo DeFrancisco in a snowstorm in 1982 playing baseball in the, in the, the wicked winter of, uh, of that year. Um, each of you has a passion, some sort of passion. And for the students, while you're trudging through what seems endless days of high school, but it is there, whether it's sports, drama, arts, eating lunch, it's a passion. It's a passion about doing something. In my almost 25 year career, it was always about the people I served with that made the professional, my, my profession worthwhile. Passion was standing in a torrential rainstorm in some village in rural Germany waiting for the supply truck to come. Passion was flying in a Black Hawk helicopter over some nondescript piece of land with 27 other soldiers to be deposited on some airstrip crawling with an unknown enemy. Passion is staying up all night on an evaluation to help a unit prepare for an upcoming deployment. Passion is being in the Pentagon on 9-11 and trying to wade through the twisted mess and wondering if your office is still standing. Passion is preparing your unit to go to war, into the fear of the unknown. And finally, commanding a unit of wounded warriors as they come to the inevitable conclusion that they have changed that they can embrace that change, and that perhaps life may work out after all. But still, the military was not my only passion. I have always felt strongly about sports. I still do play hockey twice a week. I coach, I volunteer, and I love to be around the game. I could have done a lot of other things after retirement, but my passion in sports is helping me pursue a career in professional sports because I just feel that passionate. So in conclusion, this uniform is about a choice of my passion. This profession is not for everyone, and it is up to you to make that choice. You will go through many trials and tribulations before you find your passion. Always strive for the best. I stayed in the military for that long because I was passionate about the profession, and I had fun. And I charge you with the same. One day you will realize, realize that, and when you do, so many doors of opportunity will open for you. The potential for great things will abound and life will become much more meaningful. Thank you again for everyone who made this night possible. And I know that there will be some of you in the audience that will stand where I am tonight. And I am truly humbled. Thank you.
and Lieutenant Colonel uh, Carrera, you'll be happy to know that this is being uh, streamed live on YouTube, and uh, your family, who is down in Virginia, can definitely look it up on YouTube and, and see it, and see the ceremony. Okay. Um, thank you so much, and, and congratulations. Um, now I'd like to introduce you to Courtney Brunn, our uh, Paper Lion journalist, who interviewed Mr. Timothy Kubler. Um, a shopping list of achievements and success stories proves that he is truly the perfect candidate. He's one of Farmingdale High School's top-notch alumni. However, it would be easy to simply rattle off his achievements, plus it's kind of already been done. It'd be easy to talk about how he's toured the world with a band called the Postmodern Jukebox under the alter ego Tambourine Guy. It'd be, <laughs> it'd be easy to talk about how he composes music for a little show called Sesame Street, is a professional actor and voiceover artist, has been part of America's Got Talent house band. Be easy to talk about how he's now the host and producer of a live children's show called Sunny Side Up, featuring guests such as Michelle Obama and his co-host Chica the Chicken. It would also be pretty easy to talk about his Emmy nomination, the fact that, you know, he's, he's won a Grammy. <laughs> but I won't take the easy way out by simply listing those successes, no. Instead, I'd like to highlight the characteristics that make him an even more deserving candidate for a spot on our wall of fame. Tim Cooper radiates a kindness and positive energy that people go their entire <coughs> life trying, trying to achieve. I've only emailed him one time, but that, along with the fact that my fellow journalism friends and I stalked his Instagram for an entire period, <laughs> was enough for me to sense his specialness. Maybe I'm a bit biased because anyone who has smiley face emojis in response to an email of serious questions and signs their name, lowercase T-I-M exclamation mark, Tim, <laughs> automatically comes across as a nice guy to me. But I do know that anyone who genuinely cares about the children who admire him, whose key advice is to quote, be passionate and kind to others, and who really truly loves his line of work, is someone deserving of a spot on our wall of fame. It's an honor to be here tonight introducing him to you, and I have no doubt that you'll all geek out about him just as much as I have this past week. Thank you. <laughs> Kubart was nominated by Miss Gina Pantina, a Farmingdale teacher who is very well known to us and important to our students. Um, and she knows that it's important that we have strong role models for our students. So, Miss Pantina, would you come up and explain why you were nominated? I'm usually on the other side of this, so I'm a little nervous. It was literally a lifetime ago, given the ages of some of the students sitting here tonight, because it was about 18 years ago that I walked these halls as a jailer, stood on these stages as a playcrafter, and met a person who, unbeknownst to me at the time, would turn into one of the most successful performers to come out of Farmingdale, and who would also turn into a lifelong friend, Tim Kubar. Whenever I see his face on TV, hear his voice over the radio, or even wave to him as he floats by the Thanksgiving Day Parade, I can't help but think back to the afternoons at rehearsals, running lines, creating fake snow in a blender, and driving home together in my 1975 Plymouth Valiant, singing Rent at the top of our lungs, reaching for the high notes in Seasons of Love. Back then, we were just two theater kids, bouncing around under the leadership of our esteemed director, Ken Ulrich, eagerly following the traditions of those who came before us with clasped hands and sung anthems, and soaking up the moments we knew we had to make last and carry with us forever. And that is exactly what Tim has done with his life. He has spent it creating those moments and spreading the magic we both got from this place, from Playcrafters, from Farmingdale, from our home, to children and children at heart all over the world. Even the name of his Grammy-winning album, Home, reflects the importance and influence of where we come from on all of us. I know we are here tonight to honor Tim and his accomplishments, along with those of the other Wall of Fame inductees, but I would be remiss to fail to honor this place they all came from as well. Farmingdale is not just the town they went to high school in. It's the place that made them, the teachers who shaped them, the home they all, as evidenced by tonight, 
lovingly come back to. And Daler isn't just a label or a mascot. It's an identity that every person who lives here proudly carries for life, no matter where life takes them. Tim's current multitude of identities speak to the many successes of his life. Grammy Award winner, Emmy-nominated entertainer, tambourine guy for Postmodern Jukebox, Sprout Network live television host, space cadet creator and lead singer, actor, guitarist, bassist, teacher, writer, and the list does and will continue to go on. A few identities, though, that many people don't know because they're not listed on his website or publicized date back to his high school days. Under the guidance of the beloved Michelle Lindsley, Tim was an all-star of Farmingdale's famed music department. Not only was he in chorus, but he was selected as a performer in the barbershop quartet and was drum major of Farmingdale's award-winning marching band. In our theater world, Tim's legacy was solidified when he was chosen by his peers to be playcrafter sergeant. This position is unlike many other club president positions in that his job was not in any way to preside over the club. But instead, a sergeant plays the role of friend, parent, therapist, mediator, keeper of the peace to all other playcrafters. A sergeant must be an open-minded, non-judgmental, exceptionally kind person with the capacity to give a home to and accept lovingly every other member of the group. Through knowing him for the past two decades, I can confidently attest to how Tim has continued the responsibilities of that role in every area of his life. It is humbling to recognize the way Tim has carried his identities of playcrafter and daler throughout his ever more successful journey. And it makes me proud to call him what in my mind is his most valued identity of all, friend. We have a motto in Playcrafters, 1976 till eternity, which reminds us that once you are a playcrafter, you will always be a playcrafter, much like the way every daler will always be a daler. I think it's incredibly fitting that not only will Tim forever be on the Wall of Fame, but because that wall also happens to be the start of the Playcrafter hallway, every time a Playcrafter passes his picture, they will have faith in eternity and will truly know they always have a place to come home to. In the end, what I see as Tim's greatest accomplishment is that he has done what so many of us strive to do. Tim has made a career and a life out of making people smile and laugh out of spreading happiness and creating the magical moments people will remember as some of the best moments of their life. Even without his impressive titles, the impressive titles he's acquired along the way, his life's work is more than worthy of a place on our wall of fame. Because in a world where it's so easy to get lost, Tim has found a way to lead everyone back home. Therefore, it is my honor and privilege to introduce one of this year's inductees of the Farmingdale Wall of Fame, Tim Kubart. Thank you very much. Hey, everybody. Thanks so much for being here. This is awesome. Uh, this is great. Um, thanks to everyone here. I want to point out a few people who are here. My, uh, uh, my director of all the shows that I was in, uh, Ken O'Rourke, is here. And uh, thank you so much for everything, Ken. Also, uh, Rita Patton. Oh, and Ken O'Rourke. And uh, Rita Patton uh, from uh, the music department, which was so special to me. And uh, so, clap for Rita Patton. And my mom and dad came from Florida. <laughs> uh, this is so wonderful. Uh, Cynthia, right? What was your name again? Yeah. Courtney. Courtney. <laughs> yeah, close, yeah. Thank, that was wonderful. Thanks so much. It's good to meet you. Because we had a met, so it's fun to say hi. Um, yeah, so I put out this album called Home, and we won the Grammy, and it's all about growing up in Farmingdale, everybody, so uh, thank you, Farmingdale, for, for being such a special place to grow up and something that, that makes me want to sing. Um, also, hi to all the playcrafters who are here. Hey. We hung out this afternoon, so uh, you guys are awesome. Um, more than talking, I normally sing. Is it okay if I sing a song? So, um, also, uh, my dear friend from Playcrafters and the Music Department, who uh, we travel the country and the world singing songs, uh, 
who my good friend Alex is here, who is in my band as well. So he's going to come up too, and we'll sing a little song together from the album. Are you ready, Alex? kids, but there's one um, quiet song, and that's this song. So we're going to sing kind of a quiet song, but there's one loud part, and it's all of your parts. And the word is hey. So on the count of three, everybody say the word hey. One, two, three. Hey! Lovely. Even louder. One, two, three. Hey! Awesome. You're going to be kind of hey. Make it really short now. One, two, three. Hey! I love that. Awesome. Cool. We'll do this one, all right? Um, Alice is going to sing and play a little shaker, and he's also probably going to give kind of a cue for the big haze. One, two, three, hey! Even louder. One, two, three, hey! Right, here we go. I can watch the hero settle wrong and right, and you can pass the popcorn on a family movie night. We can just walk we'll outside and take our puppy on the leash, say hi to Let me hear you say, hey! You know it's better, let me hear you say, hey! When we're together, let me hear you say, hey! You know it's better. I can measure out everything we need, and you can mix, help me read, grandma's recipe, yeah, when it's Oven will flip the lights so we can see our magic show begin to grow. I hate for us to be. Let me hear you say, Hey, night. You know it's better. Let me hear you say, Hey. When we're together, let me hear you say, Hey. Bravery is admirable, and he's a role model for students. 
Um, as we all know, as students and alumni, that there is a great sense of community in Farmingdale. We're all so lucky to have grown up here and to have Captain Niederberger represent us. Thank you. Thank you so much. And Captain Niederberger was nominated by one of our favorite Dalers, Buddy Krubenacker. Mr. Krubenacker? Good evening. I'd like to say a few things about Kenny that uh, are important to important to who he was when he was here at Farmingdale High School. He went to the Naval Academy, so he was obviously an outstanding student. He was an outstanding athlete because he was able to go to the Naval Academy and, uh, and play lacrosse at Navy. But I think that what was best about Kenny was he was a great kid. I'm sure he was a great teammate because guys that played with him loved him. He was somebody that had great leadership skills was a captain of the team for Coach Hartranth and I, and um, brought a work ethic every day that was unparalleled. And I think that who he is today kind of goes back to some of those things that he was as a kid here in high school. The work ethic, the respect of others, the respect of, the, of his teammates, and I, and I believe the respect of just the student body because he was a good person, he was a sincere person, and he came here and he worked every day. He went off to the Naval Academy, and, uh, and I know Coach and I believe from the very beginning that he's a guy that's going to graduate from the Naval Academy. Then, uh, as time went on, and uh, we found out that, that he was involved in, in, in SEAL training, we talked about it, and I remember there was never a question that he would complete the Navy SEAL training. The work ethic, the leadership skills, the respect of his peers, those are the things that I'm, sh I'm sure I don't know what a SEAL really is, but I think you've got to be those things to be a Navy SEAL. And a little short write-up on Kenny, it states that uh, his peers consider him one of our nation's finest warriors and who we are today and who we've been for the last 20 years or so I can't think of a, a better way to compliment a Navy SEAL but he's here so he's not Captain Niederberger he's Kenny Niederberger because he came through the doors here at the lecture hall so uh, Kenny come on up and say a few words Plaque also. Congratulations and thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you. Uh, I'm going to spare you uh, my version of singing. Uh, I love that song, it was great. Uh, and I do sing, uh, but it's only to my daughter with the same name as, uh, as Keely there. Uh, and that's because she's six and she doesn't know any difference between harmony or melody or bad words. Uh, but uh, this is, uh, this is very humbling for me. Uh, I'm, frankly, one, my, Mike Hungerford uh, is uh, one of my good friends, one of my teammates uh, on, the, on the team. And he called me, uh, and I was uh, overwhelmed uh, when, uh, when, when I was told that this was, was there. So I'd I just like to thank uh, everyone that was involved in that. Thank you, Cheryl, uh, for, for the program itself. I think the program, uh, having something like this uh, for Farmingdale, for the students, uh, it is an excellent thing to have for folks to talk about our history and our uh, our, our legacy and where we came from. Uh, so, Coach Krumenacker, thank you very much. Uh, and I, I can tell you that there were plenty of questions but about whether I was going to make it or not at times. <laughs> uh, but but uh, the things that I just like to tell to, to, to the group here is uh, in the Farmingdale community. Uh, there is a great sense of pride. There's a great sense of camaraderie and teamwork. And, and if there's something that uh, I would say that was instilled in, uh, in, in all of us, really, was uh, 
values for finishing, values for dedication to what you were doing, for having a sense of purpose, and for teamwork. Uh, and I learned some of those things, uh, sometimes painfully, uh, from, from both of my coaches uh, on the lacrosse field. Uh, but you learn a sense of teamwork and to do something that is uh, a little bit more than, than, uh, than, than yourself. Uh, and I think that begins right here. It begins with uh, the administrators, it begins with the teachers, it begins with folks that are doing uh, the various clubs and uh, sports activities both uh, before and after school. Uh, and that's the kind of thing that I would say to the students that are coming up uh, is, uh, is, is, is really three things. Is, uh, I would ask you to keep in mind whatever purpose you choose in life, and I, uh, I would be surprised if you knew what that purpose was now. At, uh, at, at your age, I certainly do. Uh, but keep that in mind, because everyone's life has a purpose, and how well you uh, you seek that purpose and then live it uh, is your choice. Uh, and you know you're coming from Farmingdale, so you you have to hold a, a little bit of a standard for it. Uh, the second is teamwork. Uh, you know you have to really kind of work together to do that. Things on uh, the lacrosse field, the soccer field, uh, just hanging out with your friends. You learn to work together uh, and inside of uh, your own families. That's the same type of thing that you'll see, so uh, teamwork. And then the last thing I would tell you is, is uh, take, take the time to enjoy what you're doing. Uh, many, many times I think folks, uh, they have the opportunity to just see things and do things and be part of things, uh, but they don't always uh, uh, take, take the time to enjoy it. Uh, so I, I would tell you, you know, my purpose now uh, has changed uh, vastly from when I was uh, a, a young uh, Farmingdale graduate. Uh, when I joined the Naval Academy, I wouldn't say that it was for the most patriotic reasons, um, but I was learning what, what I was uh, going to be in life. And the Naval Academy was very helpful uh, for instilling, building on the values that I learned right here at Farmingdale. I learned here in the classroom, but but I'd say mostly on the lacrosse field. Uh, and then over time, uh, I had the opportunity to work with some great Americans, uh, doing some things that we had uh, opportunity to, to serve a, a larger purpose. And, uh, and I would tell you, Carl, I have to commend the work that you did for the Wounded Warrior Program. And in the terms of public service announcements, uh, I, I would say that, uh, I would just ask that you all keep in mind uh, the great sacrifice of not just the, the wounded warriors and the folks that we have lost, but their families, uh, because they are carrying a very heavy load for uh, for our country. Um, so I just I close with that, and, uh, and I just ask you to keep that uh, in your mind. So thank thank you very much. Captain Neuberger, and especially for that ending message, I, I agree. Um, I'd like to introduce Mike, Mike uh, excuse me, uh, Matt Kleinhans um, to the podium now. He has um, interviewed Mr. George Starkey. One more speechless from that. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Mr. Starkey. Ever since Mr. Starkey left Farmdale High School, he has worked to better the Farmdale community. He became mayor and was able to pass the Transit Orientation Development Act, where he was able to bring the community together. He changed the number of vacant stores from 20 to 5. Mr. Starkey exemplifies what it means to be a dealer from when he was in high school till now. He is enshrined in the technology wall of fame as well as this one now. When I spoke to Mr. Starkey about why he decided to stay here and build Starkey Brothers here, he said something that all Dalers probably realize by now. It's a really big, small town. Everyone knows everyone. He also told me to never give up on my dreams, to put one foot in front of the other. If you do that with any level of integrity, you will succeed and have a wonderful life. With these words, I will try and one day become a successful Daler like Mr. Starkey. Thank you. Thank you so much, Matt. 
Mr. Starkey was nominated by a former Board of Ed member, uh, Mr. Stephen Wilson. Mr. Wilson. sitting in the audience, I was getting a little nervous because I was wondering if maybe should I have nominated uh, Butch this year with all of the outstanding candidates that have been at the front of the wall. Um, but I, I really wanted to, to get Butch on the wall because of he is, in my, in my point of view, uh, Farmingdale. I want to give you a bit of background for those in the audience as to what are the things that this man has done um, since he left high school. George Butch Starkey grew up in Massapequa Park, and we don't hold that against him. But attending Farmingdale schools. He has been working in the agricultural field since the age of 14. With his family going through a financially difficult time, George, along with his brother John, started a landscape company to help pay the bills. Together they grew a successful landscape and design build company, remaining partners until 2005. Today, Butch Starkey is the sole owner and operator of Starkey Brothers Garden Center. Butch has a number of other businesses in the horticultural field, including a seed and fertilizer company, a 66-acre in-ground farm operation, and a 20-acre perennial farm, both on the North Fork of Long Island which is a member of the Long Island Farm Bureau and a strong advocate for the agricultural community. He is involved in various programs related to farming and agricultural stewardship, which is on the board of the Farmingdale State College Department of Horticultural and Design Horticultural Committee, which is also a very active member in his local community. In 2006, he was elected as trustee for the incorporated village of Farmingdale. As a trustee, he became active in all aspects of village government. An example of his efforts as trustee is the Village Pocket Park, Pocket Park across from Northside Elementary School. Butch worked with County Legislator Dave Mejias for acquisition and funding for the park. He went back to one of his professors from Farmingdale State College, Professor Paul Fogelberg, who designed the park, and agricultural connections who built the park. After serving two years as trustee, he decided to run for mayor. He ran a successful campaign and was elected mayor of the Farmingdale Village in 2000, March of 2008. With over 35 years of experience in business management, fiscal oversight, community relations, and public services, transition into elected office was a natural fit. During his term, the village flourished. He improved the village's efficiency while not raising taxes. He started the popular movies on the green, as well as redesigning the village green. Under his leadership as mayor, real estate development in the village was put on hold. This is a very important thing that he did because it was tough. And he oversaw an effort that developed a master plan that addressed the present status of the village and its future needs. The mass, this master plan has been the framework for all development currently going on throughout the village. Butch lives in Farmingdale Village with his wife of 25 years, Patty, and their four children, Hank, Heather, Luke, and Nick. We're not running four companies, Butch enjoys flying helicopters, I don't know how, <laughs> spending time with his family at their farm, and Butch and Patty are active members in St. Killian Parish. Which has proved to be a success in business, the community, and his family. The biggest thing that I think everyone should take away from this is, and I think a great way to describe it is, Butch is involved. And for that reason, I think he warrants nomination to the Wall of Fame. So, Mr. Stock, if you would come up. First of all, thank God that picture isn't up. I, I, uh, the hair was actually here, and that was my compromise to my mom. And, uh, she was right. Anyway, <laughs> I listened to my wife, and I just prepared a, uh, a, a short little uh, speech. First, I, I have to put this right out there. Um, just like I heard team and, and working with people, I was one of five people on the board, 
and I'm honored to have my Deputy Mayor and uh, Trustee Joe Peruzzi and Deputy Mayor Pat Christensen here. And uh, it wasn't popular to put the building on hold and the builders were not happy, but I think we got a great product and that was through our efforts as a group. Uh, good evening. First, I'd like to thank Mr. Wilson. Now I, I might take that back for nominating me, and I'm truly, I am truly humbled. The first feeling I had when I was told that I would be uh, honored alongside a lieutenant colonel and a captain of our armed forces and, and, and a Navy SEAL, no less, was humility and honor. When I was mayor, I would joke with the village board that I thought our lives were in danger when we changed the codes in the village to allow mixed-use development by the train station in downtown. But these gentlemen are really no danger, and they are my heroes. Having a son in the Marine Corps gave me a first-hand perspective of what it's like to have a loved one in the military, so a special shout-out to the families of these men. Behind every good man is a good woman, and this is true of my wife, Patty. I had one condition when we got married, one, and guess what it was? We had to live in farming. While I've had the space in my life to create businesses and be mayor, she's held on the board and given me a stable and wonderful family life. We have four great children who we're very proud of, and my younger son, Nick, is presently in the high school. I have to acknowledge people, Betty Ann and Debbie came out. These are classmates from, from, from 75, so thank you. And uh, Trish from my office from Bay, way back when, all my friends, if I don't mention your names, I know you're here, and, and, and thank you. I just celebrated my 59th birth, birthday and posted on Facebook that it's a wonderful life, and Farmingdale is my Bedford Falls. I thought a lot about what to say tonight. My time at Farmingdale High School was not the best years of my life, and yet I have so much gratitude for having attended this school. I unfortunately spent my young years abusing drugs and alcohol and to deal with my demons. If it wasn't for the caring and dedicated teachers who, you know, really looked out for me, I probably wouldn't be here today. I had a thing going on here when I was in school, and uh, I asked Mr. Lorenz how many kids were, was in 71, he said 1,100, I think we had about the same amount. And I didn't cut out of, they call it technology now, but it was shop guys. And that was one class that I wasn't getting in trouble and I would show up. And they kind of knew, like if I was in shop, leave them alone. And I just had this tremendous respect of Vinnie Giordano and uh, I used to call him Hawkeye Hutter, not in front of his face. But uh, there were teachers there that really took me under their wing and, and mentored me. And uh, for that I'll be, and I was fixing my equipment in the shop and, my trucks and stuff, driving illegally, and uh, <laughs> you didn't have licenses back then. So, uh, <laughs> but really, some of the teachers literally saved my life, and some of them were friend, uh, friends of Bill Wilson, if anyone knows what that means, and they knew from a young age that uh, I, I had uh, the touch of the, uh, the problem, and uh, they coached me on that. By the grace of God, I got sober at the age of 22 and remain sober to this day. I'm very proud of my sobriety and the success that, has come to, that I've come to enjoy. To all you high schoolers here tonight, you need to know that I'm not suggesting that you can mess up your life and land on your feet. It doesn't work that way. My drive for success was a result of living in poverty. When I was a young teenager, my family went through a very rough time, and we were actually on welfare for a period of time. To keep the family from losing our house, we all started working at a young age. My sister started waiting tables, my mom returned to the workforce and drove a school bus and became a bus driver and my brother and I started cutting lawns when I was, he was 13, I was 14. There was three bucks to cut, 50 cents to edge. <laughs> Those were the days. <laughs> you know, my mom used to actually drive us around and sit underneath a tree. This was before I drove illegally. And she would sit under a tree and knit and she had like this coffee clutch going on with the neighbor, neighbors and she'd go outside and knit under a tree and they'd all come out and they'd all serve coffee and stuff and then we'd go run up and down the block cutting grass. Once we were able to get back on my feet, I knew I never wanted to be poor again. I want to thank my brother John, who was my partner in life and in business for many years. Without him, we would not be the success we are. 
I want to thank my parents, who I'm very lucky to still have in my life today. And most of all, I want to thank God for this beautiful life. And finally, thank you, Farmingdale High School, for this lasting tribute and cheers to my fellow inductees. Thank you to all of our speakers tonight, and congratulations to the four alumni inducted here tonight. Pulling together a ceremony like this is truly a team effort, and I have to say that I'm blessed to have a winning team. Thank you so much to all of our student musicians that were here tonight who made the ceremony extra special. We had Willie Wenzel, Liz Meyer, Jason Lenski, and Gio uh, Maraboli. Thank you for lending us your talent tonight. Thank you also um, to their teacher, Ms. Pelletieri. I couldn't have done this without my wonderful secretary, Victoria Knoll, and our custodial staff. Mr. Hassett, who got us on YouTube for the first time, thank you. And Mr. Osborne and Mr. Cavallo, thank you for assisting me in all aspects of tonight's program. Our photographer at the very last minute turned out to be Nadina Espinosa. Thank you so much. I really appreciate you jumping in the way you did. Um, but thank you all, most of all, to the community members who believe in the power of the Wall of Fame and take the time to nominate deserving individuals for this very special honor. Congratulations to Lieutenant Colonel uh, Carrera, Mr. Kubart, Captain Niederberger, and Mr. Starkey. We're so pleased to add such inspirational people as yourselves to our Wall of Fame this year, and we hope that it inspires our students to uh, rise to the occasion and definitely uh, pursue their passions as well. The four of you have proven that a lion paces in the heart of every daler, and we do appreciate you coming out tonight for the ceremony. At this time, I welcome you all to take a closer look at the Wall of Fame uh, wall, which is uh, out by our uh, main entrance, to take some more pictures to commemorate this moment and to enjoy some refreshments in our lobby. I do want to make sure we get one special um, picture with the chair, um, the committee, um, Wall of Fame committee. A couple of people would like to uh, take some pictures with the four of you, if that's possible. And um, we just want to say that uh, the green and white shop is also open, if you'd like to uh, check it out and see. I don't think that was in existence when the four of you were here. But we now have a green and white shop that is um, a, a, a great program that we have, and uh, they're selling all kinds of daily wear. So thank you. Thank you.